Hello again, everybody. Welcome to section number two of chapter four. We are continuing with objective 4.1, looking at mass. Ooh, that was a terrible circle. Uh, looking at mass and how this plays into some of our calculations. And we need to introduce this idea called the mole. And I've got my little mole drawn over here. Not very well, but hey, he's there. And sometimes what we get to is mass is not very helpful. And this is usually when you have very, very small objects or very, very large objects. And it also comes into play when we're looking at numbers of things. So let me give you an example. A dozen of something. A dozen is always 12. Okay. It doesn't matter what you have. I can have 12 eggs. I can have 12 pens. I can have 12 people, 12 chairs, 12 desks, 12 cars. It doesn't matter. So when we're talking about masses of things, when we compare the masses, let me give you this quick example. Let's say you've got 24,000 pounds of elephant. And I compare this and I say I've got, uh, let's say, 24 grams of pencils. Initially, I would say, what do you have more of? Which individual pieces do you have more of? Well, you'd say, well, obviously, we have more of the elephant because I've got much more mass there. Well, this is kind of where we get stuck. So if each elephant weighs 2,000 pounds, that means I have a dozen elephants. On the other hand, if I have 24 grams of pencils and each pencil, you can see where this is going, is equal to two grams, well, okay, I've got the same number of pencils as elephants, it's the same, okay? No matter, I've got 12 of each. So the mass does not always help us, and this is where the mole comes in. The mole, it quantifies a number or an amount, a, a number of physical things. So just like I can have a dozen elephants and a dozen pencils, I can have a number of physical things, I can have a mole of anything. Now the difference between a dozen and a mole is that a mole is much, much bigger. Well, how much bigger? Well, a mole is exactly 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power of things. That is a 602 comma. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. This number, 602 times 10 to the 23rd, so 3, is the same as 602 followed by 21 zeros. That is 602 sextillion things. Okay, It is huge, way bigger than anything we can even comprehend. And this is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro. And he was an Italian scientist who kind of developed this idea. They didn't really pinpoint the number down until after he died. And you saw that in that TED video that you watched at the start of this section. Uh, but it is a gigantic amount of stuff. And what we're going to be able to do now, because atoms are really, really small, uh, in, this, in this short little paragraph down here, it talks about... Uh, the number of protons, or actually that was in the last section, but uh, it, it talks about how atoms are so, so tiny, we need to use a, a number like a mole that quantifies a lot at a time so we can begin counting or explaining chemically what is happening in a chemical reaction. So the bottom line is the mole is huge and it's not used in much else besides chemistry. So read this short little paragraph again, go back and take a look at that TED video if you haven't watched it yet, and then you're ready to move on to section three when we start using the mole.